Welcome back to the Pop 'em Don't Watch 'em Whiskey Review Channel. Troy back with another review tonight. The New Orleans Bourbon Festival lineup of picks. We're going to review them all. Ladies and gentlemen, the fest is back. It got canceled last year. You can use those tickets for this year, August 18th through the 21st, 2001. The Bourbon Fest is back. So, let's get into the picks this year. Now, these are the ones I have. There were more picks. I know there's a Four Roses pick. I uh, didn't get that one. But these are the four I got. We got two bourbons, two ryes. So we're gonna go left to right in the review. First one we're gonna review, the Widow Jane Lucky 13 year. This is a 13 year straight MGP, it is not a blend. It is 99 proof from the New Orleans Bourbon Fest pick team. I tried to get some information about the picks from uh, Tracy Napolitano, he's the one that runs the New Orleans Bourbon Fest. Didn't get back to me, um, read my message, didn't get back to me, so I'm gonna give you the information that I know. So 13 years on this pick, Widow Jane, Lucky 13, they're doing, I see a few of those picks coming out now. I wonder if that's gonna be their new barrel pick program. That's pretty good, because there's not a lot of old MGP left out there. And this is 13 year straight MGP. Let's get into the nose. So straight off the back, strong, strong cherry wood. A lot of oak, shown at 13 year age. A lot of cherry, vanilla, caramel. Very sweet nose. Little hint of dark fruits, not much. That cherry's really punching through and taking over. It's almost cough syrup cherry. To the New Orleans Bourbon Fest back 2021. Cheers. So the nose translates straight to the palate. It doesn't really punch you in the mouth. 99 proof, a little low. Not a lot of spice. Sweet on the front. That cherry's hitting through a little bit of citrus. Strong oak presence in this one. Let's get another sip. Yeah, same thing. Now I must say Widow Jane for me, I know a lot of people, they love Widow Jane. I've pretty much tried every Widow Jane product and have not liked any of them, none of them. Uh, just not my profile. I don't know. You know, you think 13 year MGP, but I'm sure they're going for a certain profile and they pick those barrels um, to put in their blends or to be picked. Widow Jane has never done it for me. None of their products. I'm not saying they're bad at all. This, this is a good bourbon. Just for me, something about it just doesn't hit my palate right. But I know tons of guys that love Widow Jane. If you love that Widow Jane profile, that very oaky cherry. You're going to love this one. 13 year MGP. You can't beat it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just oak and cherry. You get a little bit of that sweet vanilla, a little bit of caramel, but I'm getting a lot of oak and cherry. So the next one, the Peerless, Peerless Bourbon, New Orleans Bourbon Fest pick. This one was barreled on August 20th. 2016 so this has got to be five years I'm sure it was uh, picked if, if not I mean 2020 it's gonna be a late four year early five year pick this one's coming in at 108.1 now I'll tell you what for how young it is on the table this is the darkest one that has got some darkness for being as young as it is but Peerless, doing great things at Peerless. I had a Mysano's Peerless pick from last year. Incredible. Let's see how the New Orleans Bourbon Fest pick does. Oh, man. Candy shop sweetness. Tons of candied 
uh, those little candied oranges, candied apricots, candied dark fruits, uh, straight candied fruit, sugar candied fruit on the nose. A little bit of vanilla extract. Man, that is a sweet, sweet nose. Pure sugar. Man, the things Peerless are doing with these with these picks at the age that they're at, man, it's got a little bit of that fresh oak, sweet oak, and just candy, candy, candy on the palate. I mean, this is, oh, man, if you like sweet bourbons, I'm not getting a lot of spice, if you like sweet bourbons, you're gonna love this one. I mean, it is a candy shop. Apricot, and a little bit of peaches coming through. Man, hitter, hitter, man. Guys, if you see this one on the shelf, I think it's between 80 and $100, depending on where you see it at. Pick it up, pick it up. I love Peerless products, man. They're doing great stuff. That, man, that's 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 good stuff there. It's crazy what the age on this compared to the 13 year here. I'm taking this one all day. That's just me. Definitely comes up with a lot more complexity. Now it is almost 10 points higher proof, but man, what a what a pick that one is. All right. So now we're moving on to the bourbon. I'm sorry, we're moving from the bourbons into the rise. We have the Wilderness Trail Rye, straight rye whiskey. Now, what's interesting about this one, this one is non-chill filter. It's barreled at um, cash strength, which is 110 proof for Wilderness Trail. This one came in at five years. Yeast strain is Firm Pro 1. So Wilderness Trail, they're starting to really blow up on the scene. They are producing really good stuff and a lot of it, all their juice, but a five year ride from Wilderness Trail. Let's see what it's all about. Oh man, you come from the sweetness of the bourbon, this rye, oh, man. If you love that that pine, that citrus, it smells like a like a forest. Earthy. Man, that is oh, that's so good. That is rye to the tea. Honey, pine, citrus. Like an orange peel citrus, maybe a hint of lemon zest, but sweet for being a rye. It's very sweet, not a lot of spice. That is a sweet rye. Let's see what the they do lay. They're very transparent. So let's see. It's 56% uh, rye, 33% corn, and 11% malted barley. So at 56% rye. That's almost a barely legal rye. Um, that's, you know, 51% rye is considered rye, but it's usually barely, they call it barely legal rye. But man, that candied citrus and that pine, it's like a, like I said, a fresh forest. <laughs> man, that is. Huh. Now I know for a fact, these are still on the shelf. I don't know about the Widow Jane. This one went pretty fast. This one was a little hard to get. I know the Peerless is possibly still on the shelf. I know for a fact this rye, five-year bourbon fest pick is still on the shelf. Whatever store you go to, go pick this bottle up. This bottle is worth every penny. I think I paid 50 bucks. Go get this rye. All right. So we're gonna end it on a very interesting pick that the New Orleans Bourbon Fest did this year. It's another peerless pick, it's a peerless rye, okay? But this is a little different. 
This one was finished in Cooper and King, I'm sorry, Copper and King's Absinthe Barrels. If you can see that, Absinthe Barrels. So if you don't know what Absinthe is, it's a very licorice tasting um, spirit, I guess you can call it. Some people say they hallucinate on it. You know, it, Lucid is one of the um, popular absence. This is this one is is interesting. Rye whiskey finished in absinthe barrels. Let's get into it. Oh man, pure black licorice. That candy, the um, good and plenty. It, it, if you took good and plenty and put it in the bot, put it in the the glass. That's it. My mom loves that stuff. She eat. I, I, I don't know how she eats because I hate black licorice, and she loved that stuff growing up, and that is exactly what it smells like. The good and plenty candy. So it's got a little bit of candy sweetness, but that lit black licorice. I don't know the facts because I didn't get them, but. These barrels had to be wet. When they put the, I'm not saying this because I don't know. I'm just giving my opinion to the way how much the absinthe is affecting the rye. I would guess those barrels were still wet when they put the rye in. Now, if you know what that means, when you, when you finish a whiskey in a wine cask, in a rum cask, sometimes they'll leave them wet. And wet means they're, literally it's wet. The barrel's still wet. It still has maybe some rum or absinthe uh, residue still in there. Wet. Other places, they wash the barrels out. So they wash the barrels out, then they put the bourbon in, and you're really getting, you gotta pull those flavors from the wood. This, I mean, the absinthe is totally taking over the rye on the nose. I'm trying to get underneath it. You can't get, you can't get past that licorice. Nope. Oh. oh, that is one of the most interesting, different, and out there, and as Kramer said, out there, Jerry, and loving every minute of it. This one is so different. You get a little bit of the rye spice, but that absinthe, that, that licorice absinthe really comes through. Licorice is one of those things people either hate it or love it. If you love licorice, huh, this is going to be something you're going to want to get multiples of because I've never tasted anything like this. Never. I hate black licorice, but how different it is, how interesting it is, it keeps pulling me back in. Every time I think I'm out. They pull me back in, and that is what it is doing. Man, that is interesting. So, as an overall grade, I'd pick them all up. If you see a Bourbon Fest pick on the shelf, guys, buy it. Buy it, especially the Wilderness Trail Rye, which, like I said, I know is still on the shelves at some stores. Peerless, always Quality, quality with Peerless, and then you're getting a pick. And look, the people on the pick team for New Orleans Bourbon Fest, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Their picks are good. But the GOAT pick from New Orleans Bourbon Fest, the greatest of all time, in my opinion, this bad boy right here. Last year, the Bell Mead Select Cast Sherry Finished New Orleans Bourbon Fest pick we got a little I got left. This pick, I thought maybe one of these might take it. Nope, this is still my favorite pick from the New Orleans Bourbon Fest lineup. Out of these four, man, that, that's tough. Um, I'm going to have to go the Wilderness Trail Rye. I, I think this one's very interesting. Has that rye flavor profile, but man, it's so sweet with it, but every one of them are good. If you do, even if you don't like licorice, you got to pick this up. The Peerless Rye Finish and Absinthe, buy it because 
It's so different. You will not see something like this again. Now, I know a friend, a Spirits of French League, they, they're doing one in absinthe. I don't know if it's a rye or a bourbon, but this is a peerless rye. Man, this is... <laughs> it's good and plenty. Good and plenty in, in a glass. That's the best way I can describe it. It's candy. Little touch of spice on that back end. But bang. August 18th through the 21st, 2021. Come on down to the New Orleans Bourbon Fest. We're back in business. We're going to pop them. We sure as hell ain't going to watch them at the fest.